Good afternoon, everyone. Hi, it's great to be with you. I'm Tom McCann. I'm the pastor of Ballysill and Elam Church here in the city of Belfast. Uh, it's a delight to be with you. It's a delight to be able to share a word of testimony with you uh, today. And I trust and pray it will be a, a word of encouragement to you at this time. You know, there's nothing like having a testimony of God's saving grace and his keeping power. And you know, when I look at my life over the last uh, almost 50 years, how God has kept me time and time again. He is, I can honestly say that he has held me in the hollow of his hand. And I know the blessings of God. The blessings of God, the scriptures tell us that they make rich and they add no sorrow with them. And we know that the blessings of God are at his right hand now and forevermore. And you know, and as I come to share a brief word of testimony, you know, there's three little verses that stand out. Um, probably head and shoulders above above the above the rest when it comes to sharing my testimony, and they're found in John chapter three. It's the wonderful conversation we see at the beginning of that chapter, where Nicodemus is speaking to the Lord Jesus that evening, and the Lord telling him, you know, whereby he must be saved. And of course, we break into the chapter in verse seven, where the Lord Jesus says to Nicodemus that they marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. And as we read that, and as I read that, I see that, that in that verse alone, my great need. I have a great need of a saviour, a great need to be saved. It's not a matter of, of, of wanting to, to be saved. You need to be saved. You must be saved. You must be born again, the word of God tells us. And if we move a wee bit further on down the chapter, we see in verse 16, that wonderful, they call it the gospel in the nutshell, where the Lord Jesus Christ is, is just showing Nicodemus how he must be saved. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And there, of course, we can see my great Saviour, the one who came from, from heaven's splendour in the very first place, to rescue and, and to, to suffer and to bleed and die for, for sinners such as such as we. And we thank the Lord daily for, for his great sacrifice that he made on the cross and the great victory that we walk in today uh, because of that. Because, folks, we, we are a blessed, blessed people, knowing that our sins are forgiven, knowing that we have our names written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and knowing that we not only have an abundant life here, but we have an eternal, as the Saviour said here, an everlasting life with him. And if we only turned a few verses, a few chapters over, we would see as well too of that wonderful hope that we also will have as, as well too when the Lord Jesus says that he's preparing a place for us. And finally, John 3 and verse 36. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, but he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth upon him and in that verse of course i see my great hope so we have a great need we have a great savior and we also have a great hope you know where do we begin when it comes to testimony you're usually you begin at the very beginning but for time's sake alone we're not not going to go with that but suffice to say i've been truly blessed throughout my life I have a wonderful, wonderful home. I've got a wonderful wife. I've got five wonderful children. God has blessed me. Even, even, before, even before I knew him as my own and personal saviour, his hand was upon me. When I look at life itself, I can remember some of the earliest things I can remember in my own little life where mum and dad coming to know Christ as saviour. I was four years old and our house changed in that, in that instant whenever they both were saved. They were saved at special meetings that were went on at Course Corner back in 1978. And the two of them have went on to be true servants of the Lord. But they took an interest in us, myself and my brother and my two sisters. And they taught us the scriptures and they taught us in the ways of the Lord. And you know, the sad thing is, is this, that as I grew up, you know, I began to to rebel against them but i was rebelling against god i didn't i didn't want that was okay for mum and dad that was okay for for their friends but i looked at the world and and thought that i could find find something in the world that could fulfill me and i tried it in different places and in different things i'm not going to say what they were but suffice to say that the only place that i found true happiness and true blessedness was in God's rich and free salvation. And I thank God for the, the evening whenever he broke into my life and saved my precious soul. You know, I ran away from the, the word of God. 
I ran away, I shunned it. I wouldn't, when I grew up and when I got married, I, I wouldn't go to any of the meetings. If truth be told, I was afraid to go to the meetings. I was afraid in case the Spirit of God would speak to me because oftentimes when I was a youngster, the Holy Spirit would have spoken to me and would have convicted me greatly of my sins, but I didn't follow through by, by putting my faith and trust in the Lord Jesus. But you know, there was one evening, I can remember it as well, uh, Lynn and I were married for almost 10 years at the time, it was coming up to Christmas time, and she came in through, she'd been attending meetings over at Carrick, uh, Carrick Fergus Elam Church, and she came in on the Sunday night and she said to me, I need to have a wee word with you. And even before she opened her mouth, I knew exactly what she was going to say, and she told me that she'd get saved. And so I made her ring around all of the, the family because uh, there was plenty of the family saved and they were all delighted and were thrilled for her that she'd been saved. And they all said the same thing that evening as they were closing off on the phone, maybe not but too long now before, before Tom comes to know the Saviour as well too. You know, I sat that night and I was annoyed. And I was, I was, I was delighted in, in one aspect for her, but I was annoyed at the same time because, folks, my house was never going to be the same again. When God's salvation comes to your home, it may only be that one person in the house, but that house is dram dramatically changed. Why? Because there's one person there who is carrying the presence of the Lord. We are the temples of the Holy Spirit. And you know, even though there may be others in the home who aren't saved, they're still covered because we have that covering of, of the blood. You know, a few months passed on and uh, I watched Lynn go through the waters of baptism and she invited me along to another meeting that was on. It was May the 11th, that, the following year. And it was a speaker, was a man by the name of Pastor John Lancaster, who's now uh, in heaven receiving his reward, true servant of the Lord. And he preached that night. And he preached in Luke chapter 12. And I can remember being under heavily convicted of the Holy Spirit. You know, and I knew that I needed to be saved. I knew, and even that evening was perhaps one of the first times whenever I really wanted to be saved. And I can remember speaking to him afterwards and the two of us went into the little office at the back of the church. We got down on our knees and we began to pray. And the pastor, John, he prayed and he said, come on, you pray. And we prayed together and we prayed a simple prayer. And the prayer was simply this, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Come in today and come in to stay. And you know, in that moment, folks, God transformed my little life because he did come in that day. And he did come in to stay. He came in and he, he saved me for, for not only just what a lot of time I have here, but he saved me for all eternity as well. That whenever it comes to my time to, as it were, to leave this mortal coil, I know that there's a home being prepared for me even right now. The Lord Jesus says in John 14, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. The where I am, there you may be also. Folks, I can remember that evening as if it was yesterday. I can remember getting up off the floor. And you know, we could say like the, with the old hymn writer, done, tis done, that great transaction's done. We knew that we had passed from death unto life. And it's not just about feelings. Some people get carried away and say it's all, get carried away in a bit of things with emotions. Yes, it is emotional. Of course it's emotional. You have been, you have been awakened from the dead. You've been awakened from that, that slumber that you've been in all your life and you become, you become new. You're not, you don't just turn over a, a new leaf. You don't just try new resolu resolutions, should I say, but you have become a brand new creature in Christ. You are a new, it says a brand new beginning. And I can remember from, from that moment on, knowing that God had done something tremendous in my life. And in that moment, even in the days that followed after that, you know, I can remember different things that was taught in Sunday school that came back to me. I honestly believe that even as a youngster, uh, going to the, the little gospel hall on the Shankill Road and, and in other places, many other different meetings, you know, that, that there was the word of God was being planted down deep. You know, and whenever we have come to a realization of, of God's salvation, that all, all of those little seeds began to, to, to grow. And I thank God for, for the, the people throughout the years who took time to pray for, for me, got on their knees and remembered me in prayer, lifted my name before the throne of God. And I believe that even when I was in my sins and even when I was in the world and trying all the things of the world, I believe it was the prayers of the saints that saved me from going down deeper into a horrible pit. And I thank God 
today that the Lord lifted me out of a horrible pit. I remember you're watching this today and perhaps you find yourself in, in that awful place, that horrible pit where you've tried everything. You've, you've tried everything that the world has to offer and you have found no help or no comfort or no blessing in it whatsoever. Can I say to you, there's a hope and that's my blessed hope. And it's the Lord Jesus Christ. Put your faith and your trust in him. I'm not saying that all your troubles will disappear. But as you make, work, work your way through your troubles, you'll have one that will stick closer than a brother. You also have one that has, will take up a pen, as it were, and write your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And you will be called his. You will be known as a child of the King. And you will be a child of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You will be an heir. And you will be a joint heir with Christ. You know, to, to, to hurry along, you know, when I, when I think of it, you know, I can remember saying uh, to, to different ones, I wanted to serve the Lord in some small way or some, some, some way, some, no, matter, no matter how small or how my trivial it might seem to, to, to others, but I wanted to serve the Lord. And I looked around at the church that we were attending at the time, which was Carrick Elam, a, a wonderful, wonderful church. And they seemed to have all the offices well filled. But you know, there's one thing I noticed that, 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 that they didn't have, and that was someone to cut the grass. So I began to cut the grass in the place, and what did they get involved with different things in, in the house of God? Because Christ died for me. I wanted to live for him. And you know, as time moved on, you know, God began to call us into the work. We began to get opportunities to, to witness. We began to get opportunities to, to share our testimony and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And folks, let me tell you something, there's no greater calling than that. There's, as Spurgeon told his, his preachers all those years ago, brethren, you've been called to be preachers. Why would you stoop to be a king? And it's true, and we don't say that in a puffed up way or in a puffed up manner, but there's nothing greater than being able to share the wonderful gospel of Jesus Christ, to tell of him who left heaven's splendor, to come to this sin-cursed scene, to rescue sinners such as we. And you know, I got the opportunity to, to serve in a, in a wonderful church in Newton Abbey, uh, Mosley Elam as it was known as then, as now Newton Abbey Elam, we served there for a number of years. And then we took up the call to go to Bali, and Elam, where we have been for the last 12 years now. And it's been, it's been a wonderful time. We have seen souls saved through, 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 through the ministry. We have seen people come to know the Lord. We've seen people come back to, to the Lord. We have seen bodies touched. We have seen people really go on with God. We've seen Christians being built up in their faith most holy. And there's, there's nothing like it. There's truly nothing like knowing Jesus Christ as your own and your personal saviour. And if you're watching this today and if you don't know Christ as saviour, I would simply ask the question, what's the one thing that's holding you back? It couldn't be worth it couldn't be worthwhile going out into a lost eternity. It couldn't be worthwhile losing your soul. In fact, the word of God says, What shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and he lose his own soul? And what should a man give? in exchange for his soul. There is nothing worth holding on to that will cause you to go out into a lost eternity. There's, there should be nothing that should hold you back from putting your faith and your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a hope in a world where we live today where there seems to be absolutely no hope. Thank God we have got a hope. We have got a great need. We've heard about that. We need to be saved. We need to be born again. But hallelujah, he came that, we, that, that that way might be made open that he became the mediator between God and man. We do have a great saviour that we read off in John 3 and 16. And we also have a great hope that we read off in John 3 and 36. And of course, when we're saved, the world might condemn us, but we're no longer condemned of God. There's no condemnation for them who are in Christ. And folks, can I make an appeal to you today? I just trust and pray that something that I have said to you this afternoon would be a blessing to you and would be an encouragement to you. And perhaps if you don't know the Saviour, that you'd put your faith in him. And if you do, and perhaps you've gone cold or you're not walking as close as what you once were, can I take you to come back again? The prodigal life has got nothing to, to offer you. Get back into the fold again. You know, and then the Saviour is pleading with you. When we think of the, the 99 that were safe in the fold, they went out that day to rescue that one. Maybe you're that one this afternoon. You listen to the voice of the Lord as he's calling you back once again. May God bless you. May God do, do, do good to you. And I just trust and pray that these few remarks I have made this afternoon may be a blessing to you in Jesus' lovely name.